Well, I've been a bit on a bit of a movie bender lately, and uh, I apologize for everyone who's not into movies because this must be a pretty boring stretch of uh, videos for you. Um, but for those like me who who are uh, uh, intractable cinephiles, <clears throat> then uh, hopefully this is uh, there's something of interest here in what I'm going to say, uh, what I've been saying as well. Um, but you know, I I uh, I've been rewatching a lot of the movies that I saw in you know, like. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and I'm finding that with my my age and my perspective on things now compared to my perspective on things then, that I notice different things. And I guess that's not really saying anything incredibly profound, um, because that probably applies to everybody. But what I would say in my case is, <clears throat> you know, 20 years ago, when I watched the movie I'm going to talk about, Donnie Darko, approximately 20 years ago. Um, I had no, I was not at all clued in to any of the, hmm, you know, conspiracy theory um, perspective on things. I, if, if I thought about, I, in fact, I was pretty down on conspiracy, uh, thinking in terms of conspiracies, thinking in terms of of, uh, you know, the, of history being in some ways, um, ruled over or controlled by, um, by malignant, malevolent, powerful forces. Um, and I see things very differently now in that respect. Although, you know, even now, I, while I believe these malignant, malevolent forces certainly exist, they're not all that exists. And there is a countervailing force uh, that um, also has power. <clears throat> so it's it's uh, it's not that I've come to see uh, things in in you know an incredibly grim light compared to how I used to see things. It's just that the way that I used to see things was that the evil in the hearts of man was more. I tended to, to look more upon the micro rather than the macro aspects of, of that. Um, and the truth is the, you know, the evil that, that dwells in the hearts of man exists both on the micro and the macro scale. Um, so, so when I saw Donnie Darko back in 2002, 2003, it, it hadn't yet really solidified as like the cult movie that it is now. When I watched it again last night, I have to say, I'm not exactly on board with the cult. I do, I do still think it's an interesting movie, um, and I enjoyed it. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't say that it, I would say that it's, it's got flaws, but it's, it's, you know, it's also highly ambitious and, and, uh, you know, a, a, a definitely a, a, uh, definitely brain, brain food, um, which I always enjoy. So when I, when I saw it before, I think that I didn't really think, I wouldn't really have noticed the, the kind of things I'm about to talk about um, right now. Um, but this is a very, uh, there's a lot of, um, how should we, what should we call it? A lot of symbolism and there are a lot, there's a lot of, um, uh, visual thematic aspects of this movie <clears throat> that right now it's hard not to see as being, you know, in some way a commentary on something bigger than the, you know, the plot of the movie itself. And, um, let's, let me just organize my thoughts around some of these some of these aspects that are found in this movie. Uh, first of all, the character of Donnie Darko, uh, played by Jack Gyllenhaal, as a teenager, or you know, maybe he was in his early twenties, but he looked pretty convincing as a as a teenager, teenage boy. 
looks very young, and uh, his sister, his real sister in real life, Maggie Gyllenhaal, played his sister in the movie, which is cool. Um, and uh, first of all, there's there's um, there's this motif of this uh, really frightening, uh, scary um, presence um, that is somewhat absurdly attired in uh, in bunny rabbit ears. Now, rabbit ears never, didn't mean much to me before. Um, didn't mean much of anything to me before. Now, of course, you know, it's it's uh, they're known to be symbolic of of MK Ultra, um, just like the the Mickey Mouse hats with the with the ears on them were were also <coughs> a callback or a reference to that that sort of thing, to mind control. Uh, so you have this creature who with this frightening reptilian, like crocodile-like face, um, but bunny rabbit ears, who's talking to Donnie Darko, telling him about the, 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 who's appearing in these visions, telling him that the end of the world is coming. And, uh, and one, at one point, the, the creature takes off his, his, uh, his mask or, or the, the top part of his costume and we see that uh, it's uh, it's just another teenage boy, but uh, he's he, he's been shot in one eye. He's got one eye that's been shot out, and that's something that that that's a, a motif that continues to operate throughout the movie. So of course, the one eye thing, the one eye symbolism everywhere. Um, there's a scene where. Uh, Donnie Darko is is uh, like stabbing at a mirror. He's seeing the bunny rabbit in the or the the, the guy in the bunny rabbit slash crocodile costume uh, in the mirror, and he's stabbing at it in the eye. And later it comes out. Of course, there are some spoilers here, but but uh, film's twenty years old. I mean, give me a break. Um, so later it comes out that he uh, in the future he's going to shoot this this kid in the eye, uh, shoot him dead and hit him in the eye. So there's all this one eye stuff. Um, there's the, the thing with the rabbit ears. Um, and there's, hmm, I blanked out on it for a second, but I'm remembering now. There's, there's this, just, this is something that's harder to relate, but there's this strange uh, visage that overtakes Donnie Darko, Jack Gyllenhaal's character, the sort of hero slash anti-hero. Maybe we could call him a troubled hero, um, because he does ultimately end up being heroic. Um, but he gets this um, expression on his face that he that really makes where he looks possessed. He gets this kind of. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to imitate it here. It's something like. I mean, this is that's that's what he looks like uh, when he's or, uh, in this trance uh, and being talked to by this uh, this this creature with bunny rabbit ears, or when he's being put under, um, in hypnosis by his psychiatrist, he's, uh, he's got this kind of sinister look about him, like he's been overtaken by an evil spirit. Um, and he, it leads him to do things, you know, it, it uh, the creature tells him to, to wreak havoc in various ways. Um, of course, one of the ways in which he wreaks havoc ends up being a good thing, or exposing a character who seems to be a pillar of the community, seems to be, uh, you know, uh, is thought to be this this great, uh, uh, you know, sort of life guru figure played by Patrick Swayze. But when uh, Donnie 
is under the influence of this spirit and he burns down his house, it comes out that uh, it comes out that Patrick Swayze's character is actually uh, uh, running a, uh, a child prostitution ring. He's actually a, a child uh, molester, um, and he's got this. Uh, how do they? What do they call it uh, in the in the movie? This uh, uh, this kitty porn dungeon. Uh, that's how it's referred to. So he ends up exposing uh, this character. Um, so uh, once again, like a revelation of the method, like all the pillars of the community, the people that we look we look up to, uh, the people that we're told to revere, um, they're all partaking in these evil, dark, not all probably, but but way too many, let's just say way, way too many of them uh, to the, to the, you know, to the extent or to the degree that it, <clears throat> it, uh, it almost saturates uh, the ruling class, generally speaking, that uh, they take part in these, in these uh, sick, depraved rituals, often involving children. Uh, so I don't know what else to say. It's, it's an interesting movie. It's got a very sort of, um, you know, even though the ending is, is sort of uh, happy but bitter, bittersweet because Donnie Darko saves the world, but he sacrifices himself in the process. Um, you know, still there is this, uh, this kind of atmospheric um, quality that seems to be, that's very dark. There's a very dark energy to the movie. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and I don't know, you know, exactly what it all means. There's stuff about time travel, uh, time travel theories that that's kind of convoluted, never really gets explained that well. Um, uh, or, you know, it's, it's maybe it's not, maybe it's not something we're not necessarily supposed to totally understand, but, um, you know, it brings to mind things like the Montauk uh, experiments, the, the alleged Montauk experiments in the Montauk chair, which, by the way, speaking of which, <clears throat> brings to mind for me the movie uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, uh, in which, which I haven't seen for a while, but I, which I really liked back, back in the day when I saw it. <clears throat> but that movie makes extensive reference to Montauk. The characters meet uh, at Montauk, and the, the word Montauk gets repeated over and over and over again. And of course, it, that movie's about mind control, erasing memories. Um, you know, uh, these these uh, these sinister uh, elites who have the power to to uh, control what you remember and what you don't remember. And that sort of thing. <clears throat> and um, if you don't know what the Montauk experiments are, just or the Montauk chair experiments, it's all you know allegation. It's nothing has been uh, officially. There's there's been no official word on any of it. So you know, take it with a grain of salt, if you will. But but it's definitely something. <clears throat> And that, those two movies were made at around the same time. Oh, and another thing I forgot to say about Donnie Darko, to, to transition back to Donnie Darko before just wrapping this, this uh, conversation up. What, uh, what happens in Donnie Darko uh, is uh, a jet engine mysteriously lands on their house. Um, and that's what sends things tumbling into a separate timeline which which is going to end with you know an apocalypse unless something is done to set things right again now this uh Donnie Darko was probably filmed in 2000 but it was released in 2001 before 9-11 all this stuff about an airplane you know an airplane uh, engine you know uh, uh, a uh, passenger plane engine just mysteriously falling from the sky, um, wreaking all of this havoc. 
you know, that uh, must have been strange to see. Well, it must have been. I mean, I'm, I'm remembering the, the months and years after the release. Um, uh, and I don't remember, but it must have left a, left a mark. It must have, you know, made me, it, it must have made the viewer recall uh, 9-11. In the same way that Fight Club, one of my favorite movies, um, ends with the collapse of uh, skyscrapers just being detonated, just, just uh, uh, you know, the detonations going off in these skyscrapers and the skyscrapers, you know, tumbling uh, to the ground, just like, just like the Twin Towers and just like Building 7, even more so. Um, and that was in 99. So all of this stuff, you may say, yes, yeah, it's just a coincidence, but, uh, you know, enough coincidences and it really gets hard to ignore. And, you know, I, I'm not asserting any of these things is definitely true, and I'm not, I don't want to uh, go beyond what I think I can reasonably claim. But I would say that, you know, you consider the fact that Hollywood uh, is so powerful and is so depraved and has always been depraved. Um, but we've only, we've only in the last few years come to see both, you know, both in Hollywood and, and in the elite sector generally, uh, how depraved these people are, <clears throat> how evil they are. Um, so I'm not necessarily saying that the, the, the director of this movie is in on it or that any of the actors in the movie are in on it, but this imagery seems to show up in a way that doesn't strike me as incidental or accidental. So what do y'all think? Andy Nowicki, alt-right-novelist.com.